a team of scientists embarks on a daring experiment, aiming to resurrect a pig using a unique serum and electrical currents. Zoe and her new assistant, Eva, arrived at the Institute, home to the scientific lab. Zoe mentioned their backing from a confidential government agency, necessitating a non-disclosure agreement. Inside, Zoe introduced Eva to the rest of the scientific crew, Nico, Clay, and Frank. Eva's role involved documenting the entire process. Frank, the mastermind behind the Lazarus Project, founded it on Zoe's groundbreaking discovery. Nico was responsible for the electronic setup that sent impulses to activate the serum. The project's primary objective was to expand the window for reviving individuals without lasting harm. Later, Eva discovered there was no mobile network available, with Clay explaining the issue resided in the basement. Nico's fondness for Eva was noticeable, though Clay appeared indifferent. Clay, in charge of managing the equipment and the entire procedure, kept the operation running smoothly. Frank inquired if Zoe regretted bringing Eva on board, to which Zoe responded that it was past the point of having second thoughts. Unbeknownst to their colleagues, Zoe and Frank weren't just professional associates, but also romantically involved. The scientists often toiled into the late hours in the laboratory. Zoe placed another sample of the serum into the centrifuge and conducted an analysis to enhance the formula. To lighten the mood, she wore a pig mask that startled Nico momentarily. After a hearty laugh, they took a break, enjoying a snack and engaging in conversation. During their chat, Nico raised the subject of Zoe's relationship with Frank. Zoe confided that since they secured the grant, they decided to postpone their wedding as they believed that their scientific work held greater importance at the moment. Three years passed, yet Zoe and Frank's relationship remained unaltered. Nico pondered that perhaps the universe was attempting to convey a message to Zoe. She swiftly redirected the conversation, as she often did on such occasions. That night, Zoe suffered from her recurring nightmares involving a house and a fire, causing her to awaken drenched in cold sweat. In her distress, she clutched her cross tightly. Frank, who was still awake, comprehended that Zoe had experienced another nightmare. Amidst the ongoing intensity of their project work, the scientists engaged in a lively debate on how to enhance the serum formula. Clay put forth a suggestion that intrigued Frank. The scientists made a prompt decision to try out their fresh serum on a dog that had endured five cataracts over its lifetime. In her typical fashion, Zoe took off all her jewelry because metal conducts electricity. The initial and subsequent efforts were disappointingly unsuccessful. However, at a certain moment, Ava believed she detected a slight movement in the dog. No one paid much heed to these observations, assuming it was merely a muscle twitch caused by stimulation. The researchers remained convinced that they had encountered yet another setback when, out of the blue, the dog stirred and regained consciousness. The creature seemed quite bewildered. Eventually, the scientists achieved the results they had been seeking. Nonetheless, Zoe noticed something peculiar. Just six minutes after its revival, the dog's cataracts had miraculously vanished. This unexpected development raised the possibility of an additional effect of the serum. Frank addressed all those present, advising them to keep this extraordinary occurrence a secret until they were absolutely certain about what was happening. Later, the jubilant scientists marked their success by popping open a bottle of champagne. Zoe and Frank decided to take the resurrected dog back to their home. However, the animal displayed signs of reluctance to eat and appeared lethargic. Frank interpreted this as a normal reaction, explaining that it might take some time for all the neural connections to fully restore. Zoe, on the other hand, harbored doubts about the moral implications of their actions, particularly due to her religious beliefs. Frank sought to alleviate her concerns by emphasizing that their discovery had the potential to save countless lives, and now was not the moment to dwell on the ethical aspect. During the night, while Zoe was peacefully asleep in her separate quarters, the door to her room unexpectedly creaked open, revealing the dog as the unexpected visitor. On the following occasion, Zoe and Clay decided to transport the dog back to the laboratory, yet the animal continued to display an unresponsiveness to its surroundings. Eva raised the question of whether the dog might have had a near-death experience, glimpsing a light at the end of the tunnel. Frank, however, countered this idea, asserting that the light might not be as mythical as commonly believed. He explained that, at the moment of death, the brain releases a plethora of neurotransmitters, often leading to various hallucinations. 
but Zoe held a contrasting belief. She held that the soul exists and can be understood through the lens of science, arguing that energy never vanishes without a trace. It merely changes form. The ongoing disagreement on this matter between Frank and Zoe remained evident. An MRI scan of the dog exposed robust brain activity, raising concerns that this could potentially trigger heightened aggressiveness in the animal. As a safety measure, the scientists collectively decided to temporarily confine the dog within a cage during their break. As Clay was deeply engrossed in his work, a sudden and powerful jolt rippled through the laboratory. The kitchen had been ransacked by an unknown intruder, and somehow, the dog had managed to escape. Clay launched a frantic search for the animal, combing through every corner of the facility. At one point, the menacing visage of the dog loomed right before him, causing Clay to jump back in sheer terror. He promptly informed his colleagues that something was amiss with the dog, speculating that the serum might have had an adverse effect. Meanwhile, back at home, Frank meticulously documented all the stages of the experiment on a dictaphone. It was too early to pass judgment on the final outcome, but one thing was evident. After the administration of the serum, the brain was forming new neural connections at an unprecedented rate. The following day, the Institute's director sternly reprimanded Frank for his recklessness, highlighting that 80% of their students held religious beliefs. The revelation of the truth could spark a major scandal, and their research was originally meant to focus on patients in comas, not to tamper with matters of divinity. Consequently, the director expressed the intention to terminate the project. Frank began to suspect that someone on the team had informed their superiors. No outsider should have known about the serum experiments. Mr. Wallace and his team forcefully invaded the laboratory and confiscated all hard drives from the computers. Henceforth, the intellectual property belonged to the grant-providing company. Zoe found herself in a state of shock, unable to take any immediate action due to the contractual obligations they had all signed. Nonetheless, she couldn't help but be struck by the peculiar timing of events, considering that the management had learned about their experiment shortly after Ava's arrival. Frank, on the other hand, remained skeptical about the possibility of Ava betraying them, as she was explicitly forbidden to remove any materials from the laboratory. The scientists were now pondering their next steps. The corporation intended to claim the patent for themselves, prompting Frank to argue that they must replicate the experiment to provide credible proof of their achievement. Mr. Wallace had confiscated all the serum samples from the laboratory, but Zoe had managed to secure a hidden stash. They had also lost their key cards, except for Eva's, making it challenging to access the lab under the pretense of working overtime. Eva managed to bypass the guard without any issues and discreetly allowed the others in. They swiftly gained access to the lab, and Eva, who was connected to the security system, skillfully disabled the surveillance cameras. Their new test subject was once again a dog. After preparing the necessary equipment and the serum, the scientists commenced the experiment. As Zoe pulled the lever, as per their usual routine, an unexpected power outage plunged the laboratory into darkness. Frank's suspicion that the generator had burned out seemed justified as the lights partially flickered back on. It was in that dim light that everyone in the room witnessed a harrowing sight. Zoe was lying on the floor with no pulse. The grim truth struck Frank immediately. Zoe had been electrocuted. In a desperate attempt to save her, Frank, Nico, and Clay rushed to Zoe's side, frantically attempting to resuscitate her. Their efforts were in vain. Zoe wasn't breathing, and the room was filled with a palpable sense of despair and horror. Everyone present understood that Zoe's life couldn't be restored. In his anguish, Frank contemplated administering the serum to Zoe, hoping for a miraculous resurrection. However, the others vehemently opposed this idea. The uncertainty of what might happen to a person after being resurrected weighed heavily on their minds. Despite their objections, Frank, driven by grief and desperation, had already made up his mind. The scientists resolved to repeat the experiment, still grappling with the unknown consequences of their actions. Ava stepped up to the lever, but both the first and second attempts yielded no results. At that moment, NCO noticed that the security guard was absent from his post, and it appeared he was heading straight for the laboratory. In haste, they covered Zoe with a sheet, concealing her from view. The scientists and Ava hid, relieved that the guard hadn't spotted anything suspicious. Frank ventured outside to check for any lingering threats. When he returned, the group was astounded to discover that Zoe had awakened. 
Stunned, they hesitated to believe what they were witnessing. Frank cautiously pulled back the sheet, revealing Zoe's pale and initially unresponsive form. However, to their amazement, Zoe eventually grasped Frank's hand and inquired if she had died. While Zoe's physical condition seemed fine, Eva was eager to learn more. She asked if Zoe had experienced anything akin to heaven or hell, but Frank redirected her, emphasizing that it wasn't the right time for such questions. MRI scans showed that Zoe had made a full recovery, although her brain activity was registering off the charts. Frank believed that this heightened activity would diminish as the serum gradually left her system. Ava turned to Nico for an explanation, and he clarified that, ordinarily, people use only a fraction of their brain's capacity at a time. But in Zoe's case, her brain activity was exceeding all norms. Frank inquired about Zoe's well-being, but she remained in a detached state, struggling to come to terms with her return from the brink of death. To comfort her, Frank put the same ring and cross back on her. At one point, Zoe recoiled from him, fearing she could read his thoughts, which left Frank genuinely alarmed. He hastily tried to mask his unease and left under the pretense of checking on something. Unbeknownst to the others, Zoe's newfound abilities went beyond mere thought reading. She discovered she could move objects with just her gaze. She overheard Eva, Clay, and Nico's thoughts, which were riddled with regret over bringing her back to life because she was no longer the same. Frank, however, was preoccupied with finding a way to make amends. He recognized that something was amiss with Zoe but resolved to keep it from her. The electric shock still lingered in Zoe's fingers, causing pain when she touched water. During a long gaze into the mirror, it suddenly cracked on its own. To her surprise, an aggressive dog approached from behind, but Zoe managed to subdue it using the power of her mind. Frank was engrossed in examining the samples under the microscope when Zoe approached him, expressing her concern that something was wrong with her. Frank attempted to provide reassurance, but Zoe persisted, explaining that she was undergoing a transformation. She also confided in Frank about her experiences after crossing the threshold of life, describing how she found herself trapped in a burning house from her childhood. Each day in this nightmarish place was an unending repetition of the previous one, akin to hell. Eva awoke on the floor with tears in her eyes, and everyone rushed to her side. She was in distress, recounting her experiences in the burning house and her encounter with the little girl. Clay, increasingly concerned, demanded an explanation from Frank. Frank offered an explanation for Zoe's childhood trauma, sharing that she had endured a house fire when she was young. The memories of that tragic event continued to haunt her as nightmares. However, everyone except Frank believed that the serum was more than just a substance, considering it a gateway to another world. Neek suggested reporting their findings to their superiors since they were dealing with an unknown and potentially dangerous force. Yet Frank vehemently opposed this idea, fearing the loss of Zoe once more. Clay presented his theory that the serum had the potential to unlock the human brain's capabilities, granting people extraordinary powers. This rapid evolution could lead to unpredictable and potentially dire consequences. Evolution had always been a slow process, and Clay was concerned about the rapid changes they were witnessing. In the midst of these discussions, Zoe experienced nightmares from her past. Suddenly, she began floating in the air, her eyes turning black. Neek was drawn to strange sounds, and the lights in the lab started flickering. Zoe stealthily approached Neek, explaining that she needed his assistance, leaving the group in a state of confusion and trepidation. Nico had always found Zoe attractive, but when she kissed him, he sensed that it wasn't really Zoe before him, but something else. He refrained from responding to her advances and assured Frank that they would find a solution to the situation. However, Zoe solemnly declared that it was already too late. They didn't comprehend the full extent of what they had unleashed, but they would soon come to understand. In that very moment, the lights abruptly extinguished and the door mysteriously closed on its own. Surveillance cameras captured an unknown force pushing Nico into a cabinet, and Zoe approached the cabinet, which started compressing without human intervention. Before long, the others realized that Nico had disappeared. Zoe explained that he had gone to the bathroom, but Clay remained skeptical. Zoe, with her newfound abilities, could read Frank's thoughts and discerned that even he was afraid of her. As Clay prepared to call their superiors and disclose everything, the power cut out again and the emergency generators failed to activate. The lab's door closed on its own, 
and the elevator was blocked, trapping them inside. Meanwhile, Eva kept a watchful eye on Zoe, who suddenly remarked that she didn't belong there. She cryptically mentioned that some people achieve greatness while others merely observe it. Clay and Frank returned, trying to determine how to escape from their confounding predicament. Eva erupted in screams, accusing Zoe of being the last person to see Nico, and she suspected Zoe's involvement in his vanishing. Clay insisted that Zoe reveal what she knew about Nico. All of a sudden, a pen was sent flying into Clay's mouth, and it was clear that Zoe was somehow making this happen with her thoughts. She watched with a sly smile and even winked. Frank attempted to remove the object lodged in Clay's throat, but tragically he couldn't save him in time. Zoe continued to watch with that unsettling smile as the lights went out once more. Frank and Ava embraced tightly as the lights flickered relentlessly. At one moment, Zoe was behind them, and in the next, she appeared before them. Objects in the room soared into the air. The next thing they knew, Frank and Eva awoke amid a jumble of furniture. Frank retrieved an assortment of substances from the fridge, potential weapons against Zoe. Eva struggled to hold back her rising panic. They found themselves inside the lab's morgue, a place that should not exist in reality. It was merely a deceptive illusion. Frank and Eva hurried to make their escape. Frank handed Eva a syringe filled with the same solution used to sedate laboratory rodents and instructed her to find a hiding spot. Their primary mission was to ensure Zoe didn't leave the lab under any circumstances. Frank geared up to confront Zoe, who was in tears as he approached her, holding a syringe behind his back. He placed the syringe on the floor and assured Zoe that she wasn't to blame, placing the responsibility on himself. He believed that they could only face the situation together. With tears in her eyes, Zoe asked Frank if he still loved her. Frank nodded in agreement, but secretly he was contemplating how to neutralize this entity. Zoe, reading his thoughts, took his life, plunging them into darkness once more. Eva was now the sole survivor. Zoe injected herself with more of the serum, granting her boundless power. Meanwhile, Eva discreetly pocketed several syringes filled with the deadly substance. She heard Zoe calling her, realizing that hiding was futile. She started searching for Zoe, and at one point, Eva managed to extract one of the syringes from her boot. A few moments later, Zoe appeared next to her and suddenly they were both trapped within Zoe's nightmarish world. Eva locked the door and saw a young Zoe holding matches. This revelation made Eva understand that it was Zoe who had caused the fire and trapped their neighbors. Adult Zoe broke free and advanced toward Eva. Eva tried to persuade the little girl to open the door and save the neighbors. The young Zoe did just that, and a brilliant white light burst forth. In the real world, Eva administered the injection to Zoe who fell lifeless, Sirens from fire engines could be heard in the distance. Rescue workers rushed into the laboratory. Eva embraced a man, but then she noticed that Zoe had vanished. In reality, it was all part of the game. There were no real rescuers, only Zoe. Zoe, who had come for Eva's life. In the final scene, we witness Zoe using the serum to resurrect Eva, Nico, Frank, and Clay.